I've been seeing a lot of low down payment programs get rolled out by a lot of lenders across the country, whether it's a 1% down or 0% with some sort of assistance. This is something I think a lot of people are not talking about. And I think it's something that you need to be prepared for if this is the route that you go when you purchase your home. My name is Sean Oihara. I'm an area manager with Geneva Financial, helping you understand the mortgage industry and helping you get the right mortgage so that way you don't make the mistakes that I've seen folks make over the last 15 plus years that I've been in this industry. If you have any specific questions, don't forget you can always hit the description below. There's links to more information and how you can get a hold of me. Now, why I wanted to shoot this video because I feel like there's been a lot of talk lately about these very, very low down payment programs to help you get into houses. And on one side of the coin, that's great because it helps promote home ownership and we're helping folks get into the home that don't have a ton of money to buy. But on the other side, what makes me a little nervous is that when you have these low down payment programs, let's just say for, for a second here, and I know some people may not agree with me on this, but let's just say the market starts to pull back in your market. And I don't think we may see this across the country. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I have seen in certain areas where home values are starting to pull back. So if you are getting into a home with 1% down, 3% down, or very, very little money out of your pocket, if the market pulls back 5%, you're upside down on your house. And I think this is the one thing that I caution a lot of people on, that if this happens to you, you cannot panic about your property. This was a mistake a lot of folks had made back in the day when the market started to pull back. But I think the intention of why they bought the house was wrong from the beginning. I think a lot of people were speculating that home values were gonna continue to go up back before 2008, but a lot of that same sentiment is going on today. A lot of people don't think that the market can pull back, and a lot of it is predicated on the fact that we don't have a lot of inventory on the market, so the supply and demand really supports that, yes, there's not a ton of inventory. But the only thing that really worries me and why I wanted to do this video, because I always feel like when you get too many people agreeing and, and going in one direction, you always have to ask the question, why is that the case? And is there something that I'm missing? And I feel like in the housing industry right now, so many people are gung-ho about the market. Rates are coming down. There's going to be more buyers that hit the market. I saw somebody say that, you know, if rates go down 1%, I think there's another 5 million or so buyers that hit the market and home values are just going to skyrocket again. I don't know if that's 100% true, but I do think that from what I've seen, you have credit card debt at an all-time high. You have savings at an all-time low. You have car defaults picking up. You have credit card defaults increasing. You have people that are struggling. Refinances are picking up. So I feel like there's a whole segment of the people out there that are having a difficult time making ends meet today. And yes, I know you can say that most people are in homes and they don't have mortgages or people are in homes that they have really low interest rates. But I feel like those people over leverage themselves to some extent. They may lose their home, they may need to sell, they may need to refi. I think there could be an adjustment that could take place. And I think for you as the buyer, you have to ask yourself, why am I buying this house today? How long do I plan to stay in this house? Because again, what if, what if the market pulls back? If that happens, are you, do you need to sell your home? What if you can't sell your home because you're upside down in equity? Are you gonna short sale or are you, are you prepared to be a landlord and rent your home out long enough so that way the market can come back so you can sell your home? I think those are some of the questions you have to ask. Um, and again, you might disagree and say, Sean, you're crazy. The market's never gonna pull back. Things are gonna continue to grow at the pace. Uh, maybe not as heavy of a pace, but but maybe three to 5%. And you may be right and things may be great. But again, I always like to think on the side, error on the side of caution. If everyone is all saying that rates are coming down, we're gonna be great, things are gonna be fine next year, and the market's gonna pick up, that's still a problem for most people because they can't afford the $400,000 house today. So if values go to 450 to 500, the person that couldn't afford four is sure as hell ain't gonna afford 500. So there's going to be, I think a huge disparity in the folks that own and the folks that don't own if the market continues to do what it's doing. Now, if it pulls back, I think you may see more unemployment. I think you see a lot more of corporate bankruptcies happening. And if that happens, I think people get laid off. And I think if you get laid off, how tough is it then for you to get a job that's gonna be good paying so that way you can buy a house? So I think there's some things out there brewing. You have to think about it. And I think you have to ask yourself the question. Don't go into this process blindly simply because your loan officer or your real estate agent is telling 
telling you like, oh, it's never going to happen. Well, guess what? No one thought 2008 was going to happen and it happened. So you have to ask yourself the question, how long am I going to stay in the house? Is it two years? Is it five years? What if the market pulls back? What am I going to do? What is your next plan of action if that does happen? And you can't refi because so many people always talked about marry the house, date the rate. But what if you can't refinance your house because your LTV isn't there or your loan to value? What if you can't refinance your house because you maxed out your credit cards or your car payment that you had, you can't pay. And now your credit shot that seven or 8% interest rate that you took that you were hoping you could refinance. Now you can't refinance that. And now you got to make that payment for an extended period of time. So instead of marry the house, date the rate, you might have married the rate. And I think these are some of the questions you have to ask yourself before you buy your house or talk to your lender and ask him, get their input. What are some of the next options that I can have if I buy this house today? Start thinking about the second and third and the fourth part of owning a home. Don't just focus on what I got to do today to get into the house. I think a lot of people make that mistake and they think that once they're in, I'm cool, I can coast. And you know what? When rates come down, I'm going to refi. But remember, I did a video about this too. You have to qualify for the refinance down the road. Don't get suckered into buying a house because your lender or your real estate agent needs a commission. Make the right choice choice that's good for you and your family. Don't do it because someone is pushing you to get into a home. This is something that, again, if I'm right and this goes this way, I think there's going to be a lot of people that unfortunately will get burned. So don't let that be you. Make sure you understand what you're getting into. Get a second opinion if you need to on your financing or your pre-approval so you don't get into a home that you're going to regret. And if you need a second opinion, that's what I'm here for. You can message me. I'd be happy to chat with you and help you get into the right house. We'll see you on the next one.